the actual um, real definition of feminism is being put out there. And there's some people that are maybe diluting or adding things that shouldn't be part of fe- feminism. I, yeah. I, I just think that um, social media currently in today's day and age is a negative for feminism. And what you see is women saying men can't do this, men can't do that, men shouldn't do this. Men, they're not even necessarily talking a lot of the times about I want to be empowered as a woman. They're talking about what men shouldn't do and what men can't do and and they, they're, they're going too far sometimes. And then what you have is men looking at this and saying, <clears throat> is this feminism? I don't like feminism. I don't like, I don't like women no more. Let's shut up, go, so, to, the, go to the corner, bend over and shake your ass. In essence, <laughs> watch you, yourself. Are you, are you saying the new... Show, show me what, what you're you working with. <laughs> <laughs> So in essence, are you saying the new age feminism is female misogynism? Yo, 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 yo. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, rodents and other small insects, welcome to episode 19 of the Eloquently Saying Nothing podcast. I'm Stavros Boss, nice to have you here. We're recording early morning, busy lives, busy schedules, we have to get here nice and early. You might hear some birds chirping in the background, that's that East, East London beautifulness that you hear. Uh, before we even introduce anybody, let's just send our respects and shout outs to the legend MGF. Salute. 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 Salute MG. Yes. Uh for anyone that knows, they know. And if you don't know. You better get to know. Yeah. Ask about it. So who else do we have in the room for episode number nineteen? Simple Simon's in the building, nice and early. Um I love black women. <laughs> Up Nepa. <coughs> and we have Sky on people with your boy Webs. So why don't you use it? Try not to bruise it. By time, don't lose it. The reflex is a lonely child. I'm not going to go any further. What's going on? Episode 19. I can't even think of anything. I think I lost my spleen. It's always spleen with teen with you. Mm. It's always like I'm with the teen. Yeah, teen, teen, spleen. Spleen. yeah. my teen's me. Just, the reflex is, it is a gay song, isn't it? I don't know if it's a gay song. I think, it's, took, I, I think they might be talking about anal sex. Hey! Oh, wow. That's yeah, they said something about bruising it there. Don't try not to lose it. Try not to bruise Jesus. it. Jesus. Go li- listen to the lyrics for the song. You know what? You know what? We need to talk about that because even before the podcast started, we were saying that Superman, um, He-Man is gay. So you may have to go back and revisit the, some things in our past and decide okay. whether things are certain things. Well, let's finish. Even int- blatantly, yeah. Okay, let's finish introducing ourselves and then we can get into that conversation. Yeah, this is Mr. Wolf um, and I co-sign Simple Simon. While he's in the building, people, what's good? Okay, so yeah, before we started, we we were talking about this, the the possibility of a He-Man film coming out, yeah? Is that, that's what was uh, Mr. Wolf was saying. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen these new adverts from is it uh money super money supermarket and you got he man and you've got skeletor skanking and the man them <laughs> before we started recording thought that it looked kind of gay and i thought well is that because there's a muscle man skanking i just thought that skeletor was skanking the skeletor looked gay to you when you did that i th- he man is definitely gay in that in that, in that advert <laughs> and the way skeletor <laughs> came out the house <laughs> <laughs> Skanky. I don't know if he's, it doesn't necessarily have to be gay, but it's very effeminate the way that Skeletor decided to enter enter the the, the 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 street there because he came out and he did he did one movement with his hand like he was pointing to the sky. Right? And I don't know man that come out the house pointing to the sky like that in their pants. But can we establish That's that uniform. as a brand image? This money supermarket is like the 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 marketing seems to be quite hetero um hem- homo friendly. Yes. Well, yeah. obviously, when you got man that's walking with <laughs> walking with um uh batty riders and and high is heels. that the same company? Yeah, yeah. it's the same company. Can, can I uh, let me ask you a question? Because well, before we just splinter off slightly, um, it's not even a slight thing. We we said that the uh, some of those cartoons in the eighties and early nineties 
were questionable. Yeah. So you know, I was saying that he man, if you look at it, if you go back and watch it, it seems a bit he, bit of a you know He man Prince Adam, aka He Man <laughs> was gay. <laughs> How was he gay, bro? Come on, look at him. Well, he's just a look at the, man. the 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 bob cut, the, the man pink, the, bob. Pink, the pink shirt. Yeah, but that was the time, innit? That was the seventies, innit? it? The seventies, exactly. The seventies was seventies. The seventies that he man came out. Eighties, 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 seventies. What them times? But it was, was early, early gay, early gay what? Early gay movement was Turbo and Ozone gay. What? Oh yes, Turbo and Ozone was. Look played. what they were wearing. Turbo was. Tank Ozone tops. was gay. Ozone may have been gay. Ozone was. But Ozone was the one that was putting it on. Um, what's the woman's name? No, Turbo was. No, no, no. Turbo was gay. Special, Ozone was special K. Special, special K. K. No, she, Turbo she was, was gay. Remember, Turbo had that little Latino thing that he went for. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. I yeah. think Cringer was gay. Which one is that? Oh, Cringer. Wiley Cat. Wiley no, Cat and Cringer. He, he managed. Cringer turned into Battle Cat. Yeah, but when he was cringy, he was gay. <laughs> was he gay, though? Oh, is that the one that spoke oh, like this? Do you know who I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried about that? I'll watch it again. Orko. No. Um, Scooby Doo. And, um,. What's this? What's the what's the what's the Scooby Doo's best friend in Scooby Doo? Shaggy. Shaggy was a bit bestiality, you know. Eh? Because the way he was moving with Scooby was didn't seem correct. Oh, oh hey Shaggy, hey that, Scooby. Is that yeah, the, yeah. the same way He Man and that? What was it? The, the cat or the dog or whatever went in the cave. They lived in the cave, innit? Battle cat. Yeah. They didn't live in a cave. But I thought this is the thing. Until you told me earlier, I really thought that he was bragging she ra I thought that was his thing, innit? No, she ra his cousin. And Why like I said. Cousin, like? Regardless of that, he was banging her anyway. <laughs> I, I say Man at Arms was banging so Shira. Wait, look, back, back in the day, it was incest, you know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't a team. This is a Game of Thrones business. Thrones, boy. Yeah, yeah, Game exactly. of Thrones business. I'll be honest with you, Bert and Ernie. Uh, oh, Bert and Ernie were yeah, definitely Yeah, Bert and Ernie lived together in Central. Oh, maybe yeah. one, oh, maybe, I think. But were they brothers? Was, I think one was, one secretly liked the other one and the other one didn't like him back. <laughs> no, I, I just think uh, unrequited love. Because it, it was, it was Ses- Sesame Street. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was. Oh my god! Is it Ernie? That's the one that's the kind of got the long bald head. Whichever. I can't remember which way. No, because hey Bert. All right, Ernie. Hey Ernie. Bert. Hey Ernie. Ernie was the aggressive one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With the eyebrows, <laughs> isn't it? That, yeah, that furrowed and. But he would, he would smash out. Uh, but. How about bungle? When you say when you say smash out, what do you mean? You mean smash him out? How about bungle? 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 And the other one spoke the most filth. Yeah, it's Zippy, yeah. Zippy, watch it again. No, 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 watch it again. In fact, both of them, yeah? Including the uh, host. You can even YouTube it. There's there's clips where people have said there was some ins- insidious nastiness filth. that they... in Yeah, and it's not like... In the children's only program. A, only as you watch it as an adult, you're like, this, this is filth. But they were just putting it in the children's program. Rod, wow. you, Rod YouTube Jane, it. and YouTube. Freddy were the dirtiest trio going in that program. <laughs> Just, you know, know man's were running just, train on, on Jane. Just listen to the names. Wow. Rod, Rod and Freddie were running Freddy. train on Jane. <laughs> wow. Well, so Rod, Rod is a is a euphemism. Zippy was one of them. Zippy was the gangster, one, wasn't he? Yeah. One was Zippy classic. was gangster, but yeah. still rude. And I'm sure he he got he got dealt with as well. Anyways, just to go back to what I was gonna say on this money supermarket thing. You know they had the uh, <laughs> the men that were wearing the hot pants and with the oh, whatever. Man. Did it bother you when? Because I didn't. I, I didn't like it because I got tricked when the first time I saw it. And then, and then, and then <laughs> <laughs> wait, hang on, wait. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait, put that out. Wait, there. hang on. How did you get tricked? Because, because he was you, a woman. You only it? saw the, you only saw the bottom half first, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and as Mr. Wolf said in the previous episode, sometimes you just look at the bottom half first, and then. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> did it bother you when they started using black people? Like all of a sudden, like what? Yes, what? It bothered me. It, and then not only did they, did they use the black, they turned him around and spanked him. And that's why I said you're taking a piss now. He kind of looked like the main or the focal point of that, he you know, w- the bigger guy. And then at the end, you see him walking away, yeah. you know, toddling around. You know what my biggest issue was? He was right? toddling around. Do you know what my biggest issue was? If they'd got one of those greasy, greasy mans, innit? Them greasy model mans that have all six pack or whatever. Then I'll say, you know what? It's them greasy man that do them things. They're doing it, innit? They got an uncle to do it. And that's when I just said he looks like a like, like, a, like a proper uncle. Yeah. And I said you like taking the. He piss. looks like the type you'd have to prostrate to in a, in a party. Like you can't yeah. get an uncle to be putting in high heels and hot pants on. He did it though. That's he, what I'm that's saying. That's the thing. He did it. 
I bet you the traffic warden in the skies. Mm. I got bills to pay. I bet you the traffic warden. I'm more sensitive. I'm more like I can see him wanting to buy a ticket on one of the cars when he was there. <laughs> okay then, all right. <laughs> Let, let's just let's just lead into this into a question that's just popped into my head. <laughs> if you we have an actor on the table, I think all of us. If 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 the opportunity came down the road and we were walking down the road and there was a scout or a woman that we met somewhere and, or a man and they said, you know, I I do films, I produce films. I, I, I've had no. a laugh with you. I think. Let me finish. I think you could be a, a, a good actor. Would you come and take a, a part in a in a big film that you'd be interested in doing something like that? But uh, the fee is good. The film is good. But what they ask you to do, you feel a slightly uncomfortable with. Not because you don't necessarily mind doing it, but you feel because I'm a black man, I feel this is not necessarily the best um, promotion of black men. So whether it's a bit of a fuck thing or maybe it's an effeminate thing that you're not comfortable with they might want you to because what they say a lot a lot of they, what they do in Hollywood a lot is they get black black men to dress up as women whether it's in uh, a lot of comedies and stuff like that it's like all, all comedians must dress up as a, as a woman before you can break out in, yeah, but that, in Hollywood that, that is would, would literally you? all comedians though isn't it well mm, black, no. people, black people are focusing on black people Robert Williams Adam Sandler um Oops. Robert Williams ain't black. It, it, it's a Adam com- no, not black. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, he's, he's trying to say like comedians. He's so trying to say it's a universal thing that like comedians in films. Just for some strange movie. reason, I don't know what it is, but somebody in the industry seems to think that there's great comedy to be had when a man dresses up as a woman. Listen, for they, some strange reason, they make their money. I don't understand why, but they, they make see, make but how money. is it funny? Mrs. I, Doubtfire. It's not funny. Mrs. I don't know. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna say it's not funny, but I don't see how. It's automatically deemed as funny. Like, do you understand what I'm saying to you? It, it, see, there's different things. Like, there's a difference between Big Mama's house and The Night Professor. Because mm. obviously, The Night Professor, um, he played Eddie, Murphy, Eddie Murphy played everyone. Yeah. So, fine. But in Big Mama's house, he was just one, he just played a woman. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm like. Why? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'd be Big Uncle's house. Would, would any of you turn down the pay to say, I'm not doing it? Well, what's not, the pay? <laughs> simple. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Mr. Wolf here, when I was younger, I got approached. Did you put on a dress? No. I, I must have been about 19. And a guy approached so me. So a good 25 years ago, okay. Maybe 55 years ago. A guy approached me and asked me um, Can I if I want to model baby oil? underwear. And he said it would be a designer, Calvin Klein. And he gave me his card. And I just felt uncomfortable. Did you used to have hair at the time? Plenty. Wow. And I, I took the card. I thought about it, and then I thought, "God, don't look right to me, mate." Threw it in the bin. But let's say he, you thought he was legitimate. Would you do something like that? Under it, yeah, but he just didn't seem right to me. So it's nothing to do with what he's offering. Is to who 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 gave he the offer? The guy that yeah, he seemed a bit, you know, <laughs> Mister would end up in one gun porn. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, you know, but but to be fair, if it came through. Um, legitimate means and the money was good I would have done it okay. but, right. in, but in terms of being offered to do something that demeans my character or my community no not involved I, I guess a better question would be what is it you wouldn't be willing to do for like a million pound paycheck in a film the funny thing the funny thing is though it doesn't always come through legitimate means most scouts that scout talent do look shady nasty and dirty for some reason, they they just do. It's like it's the it's the requirement when you enter this profession. Are you, are you so, both? So they you so they all look like Gary Glitter. They all look they, no. They all look a bit. All scouts that scout talent come all on, look a bit on. questionable. It's Jeez. it's I've noticed that. It's even, very weird. Sorry, just going back to the original point when you just mentioned Gary Glitter. Even the tune "Come On, Come On" now. When you think about it now, like come on. <laughs> No, what, even 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 tune, the tune you want to be in my gang. Yeah, come on. When you think yeah. about all of this stuff, come on. Jim will fix it, business. Yeah, yeah. listen. Even um, Rose Harris, you don't know what when he was doing. It, when he was doing your it. letter no, no, no. is only a start of it. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, when Rose Harris was using his thing and he was going. <laughs> For me, that could have been one juju that he was doing on these people. We don't even have known. <laughs> one witchcraft. The did you do? Do? So wait, all of these, all of these kiddies, exactly. presenters. Was Tony Hart gay? Nah, Tony Hart. The Tony Hart trouble kids. Hey, might, no, don't think he trouble kids. But he may have been gay though. Listen, I don't trust any of them. The ones they, they like, that will hurt if they turn out to be one of these pedophilia gay or whatever it is business that they were kiddie fiddlers is Tony Hart one, 
and uh, who's the uh, Rolf? Not sorry, who's the um, the uh, nice to see you to see you? Oh, oh, um, Brucey, Bruce, Bruce, yeah. Bruce, 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 Bruce comes out. Bruce, yeah. Nah, Bruce is a legend. As, as one of them Did you see man. the dance and skank when exactly. he comes out? And look at the, his wife. His wife is decent. His wife is already young. Bruce, mm. Bruce just takes them young, but, but eligible young. He doesn't take them <laughs> just young. <laughs> eligible. It will young. hurt, man. Bruce strikes me as a. A Trump kind of guy, like he would grab her by the pussy. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think if you're talking about maybe a sexual yeah, assault, yeah, yeah, I could put that on a Brucey. <laughs> I think Bru- say, good game, good game. I think Brucey back as- in the day was just putting his hand up and everybody's scared. That's, that's the same as that uh, um, ma- magician. Uh, Paul, Paul, Daniels. Paul Daniels. Yeah, Paul Daniels he, he, was a bad he, he had himself a young woman, didn't he? Yeah, Debbie yeah. McGee. Debbie McGee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Debbie she McGee. was a young boy at the time, and he was an old. Who's the woman that used to do Countdown? Uh, Carol Vorderman. Yeah, yeah, man. she looked good for her age, man. Still looks good. I think I think she was the first uh, white woman that I remember that had a little nyash. She's a decent white meat. Mm. I only know, and she actually pushed out the fact she had a yash as well. Mm. Like she wasn't trying to hide the she yash. Promoted that. So uh, you're saying that she was like good looking for a white girl. <laughs> 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 Episode number sixteen. I think. Seven, seventeen. Seven, Go seven. back and have nah, a listen. Brucey, Brucey's a ledge. You can't. Bruce and what's his name? Uh, what's my other guy, man? But I don't think he, he's in a different circle though. Uh, it's the one that does the voice. Welsh guy. Terry Wogan. No, man. But Wogan, the voice. Wogan is the like voice, the... man. The singer. Oh. Tom Jones. Oh, Tom, Tom, Tom Jones. Tom Jones. Jones is Tom Jones is black. Guy. Tom Jones. Thomas Jones. He's got partially black in him. They found, they found it? It? Yeah. yeah, they found out that he's got like a little something somewhere. Of course. Seriously. And then you know Tom will claim that as well, right? What time? So Tom the time Tom Jones will ask you what's new father's pussycat. Father's. Come on. My old grandfather's father's father was a slave. Nah, Tom <laughs> Tom Jones was known to have been a proper womanizer. Like, yeah, like his wife was the, woman. his wife apparently was like this is more true, isn't it? But he loved his wife apparently. Remember we had this discussion before whether or not can you love your wife and still cheat? Apparently he was loved his wife, he's dedicated his wife to the very end. But you know Thomas Jones was banging every single person. Well, this is what I was saying, you can love your wife and cheat. I see sometimes on the voice with the way he's looking at Jennifer Hudson, like she's a meat. Like he'll take her. I would look the same way, man. Every if I was on, if I was a, a, one of those panelists or hosts on the voice, and uh, every time, every what's it come on Saturday night, Friday night, every time my wife watched it, she'd slap me after, man. Like I see the way you look at that. I'm like I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> no, but the way our Jennifer she, Hudson, was she was nice even when she of was chunky. a meat. She was big and she, and she, was, she went right down and then she put a little bit back on. This, I preferred it when she was a bit in the middle. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was in the middle meat. It was good. In the middle. In the middle. Well, Medium well, rare well. meat. Well done. All right. Let's get into the questions that have been sent in to us. Uh, just so you know, if you want to send in your own question, it's uh, catch us on the social medias at ESN Podcast. That's on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook.com slash ESN Podcast with an S at the end. That's on, that's for Facebook, obviously. And uh, you can also email us at ESN Podcast at gmail.com. Any questions, comments, uh, requests, you know, dedications, big up, shout ups, let us know and uh, we can uh, do that on the show next time. So first of all, we got a lot of questions about feminism and social media. So we're just going to structure this around that kind of stuff. Mr. Wolf, you have a problem with that? Oh, no, because we've never spoke about feminism before. So let's do it. Are you being... um... (laughs) (laughs) He's so money supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's your idea on feminism then, Mr. Wolf? I didn't even hear the question. Yeah, I haven't said it yet. He's oh, just, okay. it, 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 just the idea of feminism, talking about it. I think it's um, uh, important and a fantastic topic that we have spoke about before. What's the question? <laughs> Let's wait and see. What is the idea of feminism in 2017? And is black feminism separate to... Uh, uh, it, says, it says normal feminism here, but I'll just say feminism as a whole. Is so. What's your idea of feminism in 2017? It's a shame we don't have a woman here and some hard back black people. What am I saying, black? Some hardcore <laughs> men that <laughs> that that have an issue with feminism. Because I'm not sure if anyone here has like an issue with modern day feminism. But there are men out there that just feel the, the modern day feminist is basically a man bashing hating person that's the perception for a lot of people out there I, i'm simple simon here i'll be honest with you i'm probably not entirely sure what a feminist or a feminism is i have, second that. I have an idea of what i think it possibly should have been but i don't know what a feminist is in in today's society stabs a feminist 
and I get <laughs> <laughs> and I get the idea that um, people that are considered feminists are also loosely linked to being um, anti men, which I don't think is actually true. And I also get the idea that, like the angry black woman, a feminist is has been caricatured as a as an angry person and angry in particular against men. And I think that's probably misplaced. But I couldn't, if you said to me, oh yeah, now, right now, de- define or, or describe the attributes of a feminist or today's feminist, I couldn't tell you because I'm really confused about it. A that feminist is, a, is somebody that wants the same equality of a man and a woman. That is, that is the definition of a feminist. But the way that social media and, and these 2017 has changed, a lot of people are calling themselves feminists that are not necessarily highly involved in what people would justify as feminism if I'm honest so, oh, oh, I would okay. say so, so, no, sorry so, because you've given that definition there what would you say are the activities that are undertaken by a feminist they will go out of their way to what do you mean by activities what do you mean like if there was a checklist to say okay if I'm if I'm going to stand up now and say yeah I'm a feminist which attributes and which which involvement or which type of uh, mental direction do I have to be in are you fighting to, to for qualify the, are you fighting for the equality of men and women in everything okay apart from obviously childbirth okay no. I want men do feminists fight birth. for the equality of men no in a in a strange way yeah because it's equality of men and women isn't it so they're saying that everybody should be equal they're not just saying I don't think you have to fight to be a feminist by the way I think it's just an idea that you feel men and women should be equal. You don't actually, I don't think it's, it's a verb. You don't have to do anything. You just have to think it. But I, I guess, believe. I guess the, the need for it has come about because of the lack of what you've just said. So as much as you say you don't need it, ideally speaking, if we were considerate for each other, we probably wouldn't. But given that there's a few scumbags out there. Scumbag. So it is needed whether you like it or not. It's no. almost it's almost like saying like Black Lives Matter is not needed. No, no, I'm saying to be a feminist, yeah. you don't have to fight. But if you want the progression of feminism to to happen, if you want men and women to be equal, then yes, uh, fighting is part of that that process. Obviously, mm. okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. It's 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 um, anti chauvinism, isn't it? You know, it's. Uh, I guess you could look at it like yeah, that. Yeah, it's it's the empowerment of women what, what do you think it looks like in 2017 or yeah. what do you think that people and think ha- it is and like has social media helped or hindered no, I think feminism. I mean I think that there's positives and negatives in every aspect of social media so the actual um, real definition of um, feminism is being put out there and there's some people that are maybe diluting or adding things that shouldn't be part of fe- feminism you know but um, any Robinson drink Dilute, you know. I, yeah. I I just think that um, social media currently in today's day and age is a negative for feminism to, to 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 a lot of men because what you find is that there are unfortunately it's usually the extremes in in any situation that get brought to the fore the forefront to the brought to the light and with feminism what you have is an extreme and a twisted form of feminism which is is in essence like a man hating kind of thing. And that is what's being pushed into the into the limelight at the moment. And what you see is women saying, "Men can't do this. Men can't do that. Men shouldn't do this." Men. They're not even necessarily talking a lot of the times about I want to be empowered as a woman. They're talking about what men shouldn't do and what men can't do. And and they they they're going too far sometimes. And then what you have is men looking at this and saying, <clears throat> "Is this feminism? I don't like feminism. I don't like I don't like women no more. Let's shut up. Go so, to the go to the corner, bend over and shake your ass. In essence, you, watch yourself. Are you, are you, say, are you saying? The new Show me what you're working with. <laughs> <laughs> so in essence, are you saying the new age feminism is female misogynism? I'm saying that in social media, you have a wide spectrum of feminism in, and in outside of social media as well. But what gets pushed out, what gets talked about the most, what gets promoted is this skewed and incorrect version of feminism which could be classed as a female misogyny if there is such a term all right let me ask a, a, um, a outright question yes. do you think the modern day social media feminist is a man hater this extreme thing i'm talking about yes stavros is saying the extreme thing but your modern feminist the real feminist 
It's not. Because a real feminist just wants equality. They don't want to just hate men. So the social media feminist is a man here. But the non-social media real I'm saying the, hardcore the, feminist is The extreme, isn't. twisted and uh, incorrect version of feminism, yes. But it's not real feminism. I think there's a lot of man haters out there that are claiming themselves to be feminists. Mm-hmm. And I think that they, they, they're mixing up the, the calls. And I think they're causing, what I would say, um, a lot of problems for the actual feminists that's trying to do their jobs correctly. So a lot of them are trying to do this, you know, we want equality, that's what we want. We don't hate men. It's not a case that we're all lesbians and blah, blah, blah. That's the next question I was going <laughs> to ask. Is there a correlation between feminism and sexual orientation? No, I don't think so. I think that people just decide that all lesbians must be feminist. Is that a stereotype that we I think have? that's a stereotype. Okay. But there's many... Okay, maybe we were talking about Chia Manda. Yeah. She's a feminist. She's an open feminist. She's obviously married to a man, so... And she's not down with the trans. <laughs> <laughs> down, down no, she, she's got no problem with I'm joking people. I'm joking I'm joking but um yeah but so, you know what I mean so I'll defend you Jim. I think that in the end I think a lot of the times people have just got it completely mixed up now and anytime they see a woman that hates a man or has had a man cheat on her and suddenly she's saying you know forget all you men I hope all your penis drop off they're mm. all feminists listen I think that um sorry Stav um black power and um the equality that uh, black people try to bring towards themselves or for themselves to the rest of the world, they get deemed as hating other races. We're, we're going to get into that soon because we'll split off into that mm-hmm. shortly. Um, but before we move on from this, I think men, you need to, the men that hate these feminists, that say that I hate feminism, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about the women that you think are hating the men. Watch these men that are hating the men because there's too many men out here hating as well. And they do it on the sly. When you mean hating men, what do you mean? These bitch ass men. Just, 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 just cock blocking and, and, and don't like to see any, any next man succeed. It's like, oh, no, no, because, no. because I'm not, because, no. because I'm not as successful as you, I'm going to try and drag you down or talk about you behind your you back. You see the AJ thing? Uh, no, a lot of men on social media were hating on the fact that these women are watching AJ on the fight and we're getting mad like why are you watching him for blah 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 listen Stavros' woman wife is fancies AJ and that's fine she tells me straight up that is a good looking Nigerian she told me she might as well have told me that's a better looking Nigerian than you (laughs) (laughs) that those could have been the words that come out of her mouth but that's my woman and that's the end of it innit there's too many men that is worrying about whether just, just get your woman and be happy with your woman or if you can get a woman then be happy with the woman that you've got or if, even if, if you can get a plethora of women, then get them. Don't worry about who else they're looking at. They're going to look. Everybody's going to look. Men's got that issue. There are a lot of men these days have got that issue where they're watching what other men is doing. And I, I don't get it. I've never understood it. I don't understand. Unless they're in your lane and maybe they're they, you know, cutting through your, 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 your money or whatever. So you're maybe in a business and they competition. Then I don't understand why you're watching what the next man is doing. Is the fear of that because AJ is actually obtainable? He's like, you can proper reach out to him. No, it's just hating, isn't it? Some people are just literally just hating. I think, I think a certain every, man, I, I, everybody I think, hates I think, I think, I think a certain man will hate on other man. Webs has a point. Yeah, man, man's will hate other good looking men that are in the media and the spotlight or whatever. But because AJ is actually, close he's a home. local bro. He's a local man. Close to home. Yeah, he's close to home. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's not, it's not just, I'm not just saying London people. This is the world, isn't it? I'm talking about on social media. Anybody's, you're not accessible to the world everywhere, is I'm, it? I'm sure most of the people you're talking about is probably from No. Like, Oh, anyway, I just saw it online, but I just said people were just like hating, and I was thinking, I think, I think there's hating everywhere. It doesn't matter where you turn, left, right, up, down. You always find people that are gonna hate on people that are successful. Man, woman, black, white, Asian makes no difference. All right, can I tell you where I'm a hater? Because what I was gonna say is that <laughs> I was gonna say that people are only haters when they're not happy with themselves. When they're not, when they're not happy with what they have or what they are or what they're doing, then they look at the next person and they can't be happy for them either. So they want to hate, yeah. And Stavros is not like that in general. If you're successful in, in terms of your job or you've got a good woman or you've got a nice house, that's all good. I'm not hating. I w- let me get those kind of things too. I've got a good woman, unfortunately. Well, let me get a bigger house. Let me live in a better area. I wouldn't make, make more money. But the thing where I am blatantly a hater, I'll tell you this now, mm-hmm. Yeah, is people that go on holidays a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> I, hate on, I hate on them. So, uh, <laughs> Senor Blanco, I hate on you. And Gigi, I hit on YouTube because these two people are on How my about social the rock star, media. man? You actually rock named star. Them. No, 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 no. Because, because he, uh, no, because I probably go away as, not as much as him, but he goes to uh, certain areas often. 
So I travel. I travel myself a lot. If I didn't travel myself, God knows how big I hate I would be. But I actually travel a decent amount. But these people travel even more than me, and I hate it because I want to travel as much as them. So I don't want to stop them from traveling. But, but then I, that's not really hating, is it? If I, you don't want them to stop, no. Because I look at it's. it's I have envy. It's envy. It's en- when I see envy's when I see hate, them man. posting, I'm in Japan. I'm in New York. I'm in. I'm in Singapore. I'm, my eyes turn green. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a blatant. It's, ah. And I, but the thing is, I tell them straight. So I'm always messaging them, telling them. I hate you. <laughs> you know, I hate you. Innit? I hate you. I, I'm, I'm jealous. Blatantly, I'm raggle. I want to go to all these places too. I want to be out every month with my suitcase. Damn mm, it, man. In, I would probably class myself as a hater in that capacity as well. I don't know if that's hate though. No, no, because I, I think I get jealous. So when uh, people okay. say, don't jealous me, yes, I jealous you. Okay, I when you're away and I see them on the beach or wherever, that's where I want to be because I don't travel that much. I hear what Wahala's saying. He's saying, hate is when you want to drag somebody down. Yeah. And jealousy is just when you want something, what somebody else has got. Okay. And in this case, I guess we just we just want to travel as much as they do. And I think we don't want to stop them from traveling. I think everybody has envy. Everybody has jealousy. Okay, then what's like everybody else jealous about? Because that's what I blatantly see. I don't, I'm not jealous about what car you drive. I'm not jealous about where you live. I'm not jealous about your woman. But I'm jealous if you travel a lot. And I don't, because I, 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 I don't get to travel as much as you. What, uh, what is everybody jealous about before we split off into the next question? I'm jealous of people that don't have responsibilities out here, mate. That's oh. what I'm jealous of. Kids. No. <laughs> Big adults has got not really, re- or have responsibilities, but they're automatically taken care of because they're in a position where all the responsibilities. So you're just talking about finances? Stuff like that. Yeah, no finances, maybe no family, whatever. They just can do, well, not no family, but, you know, when I say responsibilities, I mean, they don't need to worry about if they can look after their family could have done that. They don't need to worry about whether or not, you know, uh, sometimes with their children or all that type of stuff because they've got no children so they can just go fly away whenever they want. They don't need to worry about if Charles is But you don't have children. You have to, you have, you have to be comparable to yourself, yeah? Yeah, but I'm saying... So you don't have the children. You could fly off. No, I don't have the money to just fly off as but well. That's that's it's, it's a financial... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. Yeah, but freedom as well because they can just do that. They don't, they, they don't have to worry about work. They don't have to worry about whether or not or even maybe even single people that don't have to worry about if their partner wants to go with where they're going with them or not that's being able to so you're jealous of single men no <laughs> okay. you're jealous of responsibilities that's what I said in the original, original thing like you did, sometimes when people that have no, no responsibilities and can literally just do what they want without having to worry about anything else just the fact that they want to just do what they want and do it at times I can be jealous of that well, is that you Webs yes <laughs> yeah, I don't Me. think that's the case Webs well, I can do what I want. You have responsibilities as well. What responsibilities do I have? If we're talking about... <laughs> <laughs> the man is openly anyone, saying, I yeah. have no responsibilities, brother. Yeah, You're uh, trying to put them on him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think what happens is... There's no paternity test out there. What no, are you talking about? <laughs> the responsibilities we have is... Okay, let's let's go from what, what I was saying. Do I want to... Let, let's take, for instance, you want to get up and fly to another country. Yes. All right. Can I go if my parents are ill and I need to look after them? Maybe not. Can I go with if, if my wife is uh, can't come with me because I can't afford to? Maybe not. Can I go if I have children and I can't bring them with me or the, the area I'm going in is not, is not safe for children? Then maybe not. And can I go if my girlfriend doesn't want me to go because she wants to come too and I can't afford to take us both? Is that responsibility? It's a responsibility that I don't have to deal with. <laughs> Touche. Okay then. So um, anybody else got a jealousy that they... Have you established they are jealous about? Jealousy. Inheritance. I fucking hate inheritance. You hate that you haven't got any coming up or... <laughs> no, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Daddy, are you right, Daddy? I, I hate... What I, you mean you didn't leave me nothing, Daddy? I and still, I, and I've got a topic to bring up on I hate, inheritance. I actually. hate... Oh, maybe not hate maybe hate might be a bit too strong but the same envy that you're talking maybe it's not even envy maybe it is hate when I see somebody else my same age same vintage as I am um, different demographic and the things that I'm having to um, consider as challenges for myself and things that I have to challenge and overcome they don't have those challenges to overcome because they inherited it from inherited it from the generation before it it throws me all kinds of way conflicted because I don't persecute my parents or my family for it because I'm sensible enough to understand the paradigm in which we live but it's still the injustice of it 
the unfairness of it still bites at me. You mean what I'm saying? Give me an example. He, he is jealous of rich white children. It's not. Nah, he, that's exactly what it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> these were exact words. Were he said, I hate you, Richie, people rich. that have inherited this stuff from a different demographic from me. 100. percent He's I'm talking about rich white boys. Yeah. <laughs> can you can you understand what that I'm saying? Plantation 100%. money. But dude, and the reason why it gripes me is because I know that my parents and members of my family worked hard mm. through adversity, hard and through adversity that not these other people haven't had to encounter. And it's through no fault of their own. Yeah? Like, it's one of those mm. examples to me of the good guy not coming good. Do you get me? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I don't know why, but it, it disturbs my spirit. Nah, it's not just finance though. Because we, we ain't rich. No, nobody's rich on this table. But we're all from families that love us. And, and I think that's the most important part. We're, all, we're all relatively healthy. Do you think it's, I, a, it's I, a? I think there's some rich people out there, that, and and they're they're rich on the outside and the inside. They're poor. Do you think it's a? a, a, a Where that way around? A general hatred of privilege. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it's a general hatred of privilege. Um, privilege because I'm not hypocritical enough to say to you that if the privilege was the other way around, I would give no fucks either. I'm. Thank, I'm not. Thank you. Do you know what I'm saying to you? I'm not. I'm not narrow-minded enough to suggest. Oh yeah, if I was in the privileged position what have you. I would go as far as to say if I was in that privileged position, I would probably understand more, but I might not care. I question that because you wouldn't know because you're not in that position. No, but again, I, for me, as a, as a person, I don't need to necessarily be in the position to understand it. Like I, I have this empathy thing where I can kind of put my, myself in somebody else's shoes. Kind of. Even if it's like vicariously, I, I can kind of get it. I'm not saying that it's 100%, but I can kind of get it. So I would say that if I was in a privileged position, I would acknowledge or understand for myself. Maybe I might not be vocal about it, mm. but I would acknowledge and understand for myself, yes, I am in a priv- position of privilege. And I'm like, for example, as it is now, I know that genetically speaking, I'm probably superior to the average white man when it comes to sport. God damn. In sport, well, sorry, wait, I've qualified it. When it comes to sport, when it comes to sport, yeah? The views of Simple Simon are his own. Man. Uh, when I say that, I said genetically, I just said genetically this. superior when it comes to sport. That is to suggest, yeah, that if I was going to have to have a foot race with the average white man, whoever he is, I might beat him for speed. You know what, yeah? What I know for sure is that he will probably beat me for endurance because I noticed that white people tend to be jogging all the time, everywhere. Like yeah, they're waiting they, for the zombie apocalypse. But they, don't, they don't beat the, the, the Africans long, the in the long distance, distance runners. Running, are they? I, but I'm talking about me. I'm saying for me, if I, I would probably beat them in a dash, but I wouldn't beat them on, in in a in an in endurance race. I walk around knowing that. I know that that no, privilege. Well, simple, Simon. What you've just done there is you've taken yourself personally and you split it from the black. So you said in one part because I feel I can run pretty fast. Yeah, but I'm... No, no, no. When, when I compare myself to uh, the generic white man that I see across the road, I reckon I could beat him in a dash. But on the other side, because I know I personally, forget the black person now, because I personally don't have the best endurance, then I figure that this generic white person might be better than me. Whereas what we've established is that when it comes to either a 100-yard dash or 10,000 uh, meters, a black man is usually going to win. So genetically, if you want to just go by this genetically you know, we're superior kind of thing, it, it would be in both cases. So you have to separate the fact that you don't have endurance. I, I'm not, what I'm saying is I'm talking about, yeah, I'm, but I'm talking about obviously from my point of view, but I'm saying to you that that is the privilege that I walk around with in my head. I acknowledge that. It's not something that um, somebody else has to point out to me. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So in the same respect, if I was privileged in this other way that I'm talking about, I would acknowledge that I'm privileged in that way. And... Don't get me wrong, I might not feel any way about it because, hey, genetically, if I'm superior in a sports sense to uh, the average white person, it's not my fault. I was just born that way, do you know what I mean? So I might mm. feel the same way in the other type of privilege, but the point is, I would acknowledge it. And yes, this inherited thing, it grabs me. That's especially kind of- especially when I hear the stories of how how hard somebody has worked and, and how diligent they've been and how much effort they've put in. And to know that despite them doing all of that, they they they're gonna have a greater level of difficulty um attaining these things that would be well, given they, as they inherited. should have worked to their strengths. If they're black and and they're trying to work in the in the business world, and clearly their strengths are uh, just to run, innit? <laughs> <laughs> then they should have been running and making money that way. Because clearly that's, I was, that's, I was, where, I was sorry. that's where they're genetically. I um, was having a conversation um with a friend of mine recently about inheritance, and uh, we 
um, the two of us have a lot of, uh, well, we know a lot of white people. Um, he knows loads. Good, good for you. Yeah, good for me. But what we came to realize is that uh, the parents set their kids up a lot more than perhaps what parents from African Caribbean uh, society do um, in terms of properties, in terms of uh, funds for education and things like that. Are we talking UK? We're talking more UK. Because yeah. back home, that's all they do, really. Isn't it? We're do talking more, more UK. And I think, I mean, I know, I will co-sign what Simple Simon says, that our parents work extremely hard and we're not putting fault on them. It's just a different, uh, I don't know, they, 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 they've come from a different place. What, but what? I do think that it is our job, our generation, to make sure that we set up our kids mm. to be able to have those privileges maybe that we didn't have. Yeah. What I would say, though, bet the difference between the black and the white people is that we here in our uh, 30s, late 30s, what, maybe 40s, are all... Um, second generation British or first generation British. Our parents didn't come from this, this country. They came from somewhere else and they came here. And that's going to be a, a lot with a lot of the black people that listen to our podcast as well, that mm -hmm. they, they, they were the first generation born here. With these white people you're talking about, they, had, they have a, a lineage that goes on a lot longer in this country, which is they have the, the, the time to build up that money. I would, I was sorry. I'm sorry to jump in there. I need to clarify. I didn't say necessarily white people. I said people that are different to me. I'm going by what um, okay, cool. Mr. Wolf Because I'm including about. everybody else that isn't black. Okay. Um, mm. So Yes. I will co-sign that as well. well which, is, which would be more or less Ma the same thing as well. Maybe Asians as well. Because well, it's, it's a the lot same of, thing. A lot of Asians who... No, they're, second, they're, they're children of self. I know. And that's what I'm saying. They set up their children. But a lot of their children they're, work with them, though. Mm. They don't They don't just do nothing. Yeah, they but, work yeah, with their family. Is, yeah, family but this business. Is, yeah, but this is what Damn I'm saying. Is, is I know that the methods that they use to get their kids into property is maybe not the same methods that we use or that we should use. They make sure that they get themselves a property early. They, they, they may get on a mortgage with them. So that's part of their mindset. And I'm not sure that that is the mindset that we have. And I think it's the mindset that we have to implant in our kids, even our younger cousins and our younger siblings. By you referring to this climate that we live in and this generation that we live in in the UK, as opposed to back home? I'm talking about here, here and now. Diaspora living. Mm. That's it. Yeah, because back home, that's what people do all the time. They always, that's what they, they're most fighting about in the, in the first place. I, ironically, back home, I'm like, I'm helping to try and put through people through school and that. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's not the same as it here. I think that we do do certain... I think we could always do better. I'm not going to pretend like we don't with regards to what Mr. Wolf's saying. We can, we can always do better. We can always, you know, try and get out of our way to save money and stuff like that. But times are hard, man. Yeah, yeah I wish when you have to decide do I save money for him in the future or shall I be able to give him some food to put in the fridge now? So it's, some people are having that real debate with themselves. Uh, you know, should I, should I never take him on a holiday so that I can help him buy a house? Stuff like that. I, I think... That's a choice. Yeah. What would you choose in that situation? This is property. Diff that's difficult for me. Um, it will have to it'll definitely look into the future than having fun for two weeks. You say that, but it's yeah, not but fun, what? man. It's education as well. But going from one country to another is a very educational thing, that, and you and you'd be su surprised how much you, they get from that. He's that, made that, his choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's I'm that, that's fine, and I can understand that there's education within traveling to different places and learning things and what have you. And but for me. Um, the future uh, is a big deal and setting uh, yourself up for the future is an even bigger right. deal. So I would prefer to put a thousand pounds away into setting up my child rather than sending them can on, I, on a holiday. Can I have a question? Can I ask a question then? Yeah. The split is off on what you're saying there. Yeah. This goes out to everybody. You have got uh, 30,000 pounds, right? For, I don't know, your child until he's let's say 25 or whatever yeah and you've got three options to spend this money you could spend the 30,000 pounds on their university education on a deposit for a house or their for them having fun between their zero to 25 years Stavros is saying house who's next uh, Mr. Wolf property going for the house hey Webs. is that me so um, house
Who said house? Webs. I said it twice. Sorry. Certain people were clicking their, their heels. <laughs> Trying to get home. <laughs> See, this is the thing. Like, on the surface, I feel like the house would probably be... But I'm just trying to imagine an idiot with a property. Exactly, because how are they going to pay for the mortgage? Exactly. And that's what I'm thinking about. An idiot with the property. So... You can still you can always be learn. educated. Your child, your child is not going to be an idiot. Yeah. This, this, exactly. Not one, your child won't be an idiot. And two, you can still get... I don't a, know about that. No, Steph, Steph said it like you would put into... into you know, like into in the, the church. church. Yeah, yeah. It put, she would never be an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> she would never be stupid. It's, it's, a, it's a clause in order to <laughs> yeah. get the property. You cannot be idiot. In my head, if you're talking about... The, <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Right, I like what you did there. Mm. It's a clause. There's no clauses. You got 30 grand, 25 years, mortgage... Are you talking about education? Now. Yeah, because in my head, I buy the house now and I'm renting it out. No, no, so not now. In the 30 years time. So well, when they get to 25, you yeah. can either give them this 30,000 pounds. Well, 30,000 pounds in 20 years time is, is going to be Let's just say that it's fine enough to get you a deposit. Yeah? Right? Because you don't know. Your price might go down. So let's say, let's say that it's enough to get you a deposit. Okay, do you, do you want to just say deposit then? So deposit. hold on. My child is 25. Mm-hmm. And I've got thirty thousand pounds. Doesn't that and, ruin the uni? And I, no, no, no. Because you just saying. I'll set it up. So twenty five, twenty five, at twenty five, you can give them money for the deposit for the house, or at eighteen to twenty three or whatever, when you go to university, you can pay that money for the university cost, or from zero to thirty twenty five, you can use that thirty thousand pounds to have general activities like holidays, enjoyment, um, whatever, giving them nice clothing, stuff like that. So they're not no holidays. If we, if I get them a house, if they they can have an education or or holidays or holidays, clo- night clothing, whatever. They use, if they don't give them, if you you can't use that thirty grand for anything. I'm, for I'm still sticking with house. You, what did you say, Mr. Simon? I don't think you answered yet. Um, yeah, because I was bent out of shape on the whole thing, bro. I don't know. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question I have to answer, but I don't know. It's, you've given me something to think about. Uh, what? <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even think about the answer for my own question, you know. Uh. You never do. I probably think it'll be the house, but um, I'll be, it'll be I'll be I'll be upset that the child from zero to twenty five didn't I didn't take them anywhere or didn't do anything for them. Exactly. But I suppose after a while they can do the things for themselves. He told you to put them in that predicament in the first place. Because I'm putting a question, question, question. <laughs> you know what? You could have split the ten grand in three ways. One of the first things I, I wanted to do, as soon as I had my daughter and we confirmed that she was healthy and that, I wanted to take her back to the night. That was one of the like it was one of the things I was adamant that had to happen. Me too. And I did it before she was a year old. I took her back to the night. I had to do it. Like when I I've never felt such burning inside of me before. I've flopped. Burning you. You haven't flopped. Yeah, I haven't done it. Yeah, have but yeah, but you, you haven't flopped. You haven't flopped. I'll take them, but I haven't. Taken well, when they're twenty five. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't need to be like me where I didn't go until I was old. I want my child to be comfortable with back home. As a child, mm. yeah, it makes a big difference. To Grow their, into it, yeah, and like because they've met her, because they've met her over there now, they still ask for her and everything. Like the connection is a lot, it's a lot better. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and hopefully I'll be going again next year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I agree. yeah. 100%. All, all you lot is going properties though. Yeah, but at the same time, um, <laughs> look, you can put money away, and you can have a good amount of savings. If you've got yourself a steady job, surely you can go on holiday anyway. Yeah. You know? Um, I'm, I'm removing that. Yes, but we've answered that question. This is now you a know. separate thing we're talking about. And my two... We're talking about real life now. Yeah. <laughs> my two have gone to Nigeria and I was really pleased that they've gone and they loved it there. You know? Why did you let them come back? Why didn't you take their passport and leave them? They didn't want to come back. I've got to be honest. They, they, didn't, get, they didn't get beaten properly, that's why. <laughs> well, they really they'll get. They'll get it treated. My they'll do- get it treated like English people there, that's why. Probably. Yeah. My daughter oh, didn't want to come back either, which was to my surprise because she wasn't even she wasn't even one yet. But so how do you know she didn't want to come back? Because when we were trying to leave, she, she was slapped the hand. She was. <laughs> <laughs> she could tell. She could tell that it was time to go. It's back, time to go. To and she was trying to go back to the people that was there. That might be that she didn't want to be with me. Yeah, no exactly. More. She don't like you. <laughs> don't don't take me back to Ibo Ibo land. Please. Especially she calls you by your government name. Hey, Bob, allow me. <laughs> 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 Can I just say back to that question of jealousy and hatred and envy and all that? Jealousy. I, I don't. Don't jealous me. I don't think I hate anyone or I'm jealous of anyone. No, no, no. I see the way you're looking at me, Wahala. <laughs> I see the way you're looking at me. In in you in, hate people just because it's Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. I hate you today. You in the that. respect of jealousy. 
um, achieving things and reaching goals. I mean, if we're all capable of reaching a goal that we want that we want in life, some it's of just us. the amount of work we put into it. Some of us, I don't know. Some, some people they can't. I just don't feel, have the heart to tell them. I think it's the question of the amount of work you put into it. It's as simple as that. If you want to do it, you will do it. Okay. Depending on the time it takes is the time it takes. But within yourself, you got the willpower, you got the energy, you can do it. So are you saying that if I put my mind to it, I can eventually get the rest of the world to accept me as a white man? If you put your mind to it, in your mind, you can achieve anything. In your mind. Listen to this guy. Well, that woman is trying to get people to accept her as a black woman. She's better off smoking crack. Yeah, well. Listen, <laughs> give, it some, five, give it five years. What's, some what's people her name? have what's accepted her. Name? Give a lady's name. Rachel, Rachel Dawes, is it? Rachel Dawes? Ngozi. <laughs> <laughs> her real, yeah, her real it's name is Ngozi. It's not Ngozi, it's Nketchi, isn't it? Nketchi. <laughs> Why is she Nigerian, though? She's Because she knows she, she knows where her bread, she knows where bread is buttered. She knows what side the bread is buttered on. I'm not having it, man. If she ever figures out that she goes to Nigeria, she'll be the queen of all queens. Okay, then. It's done. As this has come up, I was going to ask a very different question that um, a web slinger brought up. But seeing as we've gone into this appropriation direction, I have questions here. So let me go and ask them. Uh, I'm oh, going yeah. to ask two of them. So let me finish first before we jump in. First question is, when, if ever, is cultural appropriation okay? And then the second question is, what cultures do black people steal from? And should those other cultures be vex like black people are vex when cultures are borrowed i think uh, from us miss wolf just it just came to me first i thought we don't steal from nothing lies and then secondly uh, and then it came to me that yeah. my niger boys that uh, they may have visited the united states for two weeks and they come back, <laughs> come with, back with an one accent. next accent <laughs> Yeah, baby. Yeah, but that's not appropriation, though, is it? Of course now it is. Now we're talking about cultures. That's and, appropriation. And trying to steal cultures. No. Why not? Because appropriation, as, as far as I understand it, mm. is when you go, you get something that isn't yours, you claim it as yours, and then you change the whole narrative around the thing to make everybody think that you, 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 the origin of it is yours. I'd, For example, I, I, chicken tikka masala. Yeah? Enough Nigerian boys do Chicken it, tikka you know? masala, I would say, would be an example of a... As a, of an appropriation if I'm not mistaken and I could be wrong if I'm not mistaken the dish chicken tikka masala doesn't actually exist in India they don't know what it is it's actually a dish that they've made up in the UK to say this is an Indian dish then they can say chicken tikka masala is the national dish in the UK even though the dish doesn't exist itself but it is a bad copy of an existing curry yeah but by definition Indian food is Britain's national dish Again, is it? But it doesn't have to necessarily be chicken fish and tikka chips, masala. But that is no. then. But again, that is an appropriation because it's somebody else's food, cultural tradition. You're not taking it and saying this is our national dish. How can it be your national dish? Okay, the definition because of they stole it. The, the verb definition of appropriate is to take something for one's own use, typically without the owner's permission. There you go, chicken tikka masala. All right. And what, the Niger boys. So if you take the, a America. language, if you take a language without the permission, then that is a problem. Well, I don't know if you can say it without. But the you're permission. not taking a language. You're, you're taking, taking a, a lifestyle and culture. You're not taking a language. You're taking an accent. Uh, the accent, sorry, no, my mistake. And claiming that or you are American. Or the lifestyle no, and culture. Does, all this adding on, claiming it and changing the the narrative is that's your own little thing you're adding on top. When you appropriate something, you take it and you use it, and you don't necessarily have to ask for it. Hey man, I'm appropriating yeah. so, this, man. So it could be close because, all right, recently I've seen that um, uh, there's a, I don't know if it was in a magazine or Vogue or whatever it is, but you see some white models and they're wearing the coral beads that Nigerians wear you, often when they get uh, married. In yeah. traditional, okay, in that's our, an appropriation. All right. Yes, it is. And I have no problem with it. But I saw the social media uproar about these white women wearing these coral beads in a similar fashion to black women in back home in Nigeria. Uh, they, it's the Igbo tribe, isn't it? Yes, Ibo yeah. land. Ibo land. But they're, they're the people that that are already. So even you could say Yoruba have appropriated it because it's a it's a Ibo cultural thing, isn't it? You know. But here's the problem. So w- when my Ghanaian wife wore these beads at her wedding or our wedding, her, at her wedding, <laughs> uh, uh, was she was she uh, appropriate in Nigerian culture? Here's the problem. Yes, yes. she was. No, no, wait, she wait. was. Hang but on, was it a problem? On. Let him finish talking. Hang on. Here's where he finished. Here a minute, because he was going to answer you. You asked a question, he's trying uh, to answer you, yeah, and then you took it off. Steph hadn't finished talking. Yeah, exactly. But he doesn't care about what I've, what I've talking about. Because he's appropriating you. 
Here's the problem. Here's the problem go with ahead, that ahead. whole um that the, the, the specific. There's thing no problem you're talking about. Here's the problem that people had with it. Yeah, the, those no, it's nothing to do with them being bitches. Check this out. Those garments keep, that were in question here. Yeah, keep, the beads. Let him finish really talking about crying. The beads. Yeah. Yeah. Stab the hater. They they are a ceremonial outfit. Yeah. Particular for a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, how they started. That that is what those beads are for. So they have uh, um they have relevance and they have meaning to, to from a, from a cultural and a traditional sense. Yeah. For somebody else now to come and take that which is actually centered around something, and then use it willy nilly as something as fickle as fashion, that is insulting. It's not. Oh my god. It's not. One, it is insulting, and two, it's, it's the same as appropriation. You're just taking the fashion, it's, it's with, just taking the style, taking the culture without understanding what it is. And just using it for something. No, we so didn't understand it. They just told you they don't care. There's a difference. I don't. Mm. I don't need not understanding listen, and not caring. Listen, if it is your tribal, historic, cultural thing to wear this during a wedding, and it has some sort of meaning for you, that's all good for you. But if I am not an Igbo Nigerian, it doesn't have those references for me, does it? But it is still a bead that I can find somewhere. So once I pick up this bead and it, you wear it in a certain fashion, and I can also string these together and wear it in the same fashion, it might have these meanings to you. That's fine. But I'm not Nigerian. It doesn't have those meanings to me. Are you now saying that I cannot wear these beads? Just because you found it first, you've decided this is what it means. I found it secondly, seeing how you wear it and say, that looks nice. I would like to wear that too. And you say, no, no, no. It has these uh, things attributed to it. It means this, this, and this, and we only wear it during these occasions. Well, you can do what it's you a, want. Exactly. You can tell the individual you, that. You, you it's can up do to what the individual you want. what they exactly. choose to do with it. But you have to acknowledge that some people may take offence to it. Just imagine that uh, somebody tomorrow says, um, you know what, for my wedding, I want a hijab. And they're, <laughs> do you understand? Yeah. And, 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 and they're not Muslim, um, and they just, just a random body and they think that a white hijab is going to be something special for their wedding mm. you know they can do what they want you know but maybe somebody from the islam culture may find that offensive and say that this is used for a particular uh reason a particular yeah. um way of presenting their women within their culture okay. and i can understand why they may feel offended this, this but will, let, me ask question. In, let me ask you a question if that same person was wearing these beads and they decided to wear them in a porno shoot. <laughs> yeah. Right? So they dress up in the <laughs> cultural beads. Why does it have to be a porno? Because no, no, yeah, they're yeah. taking a mick in it. Porno shoot. And they wear it and they have like, uh, <laughs> that's what they do in the shoot and blah, blah. And when they bust night, they put on the beads and all of this type of stuff. And mm. you're pulling the beads would, out of the bottom. Would you think, oh my God. <laughs> would you be all right with that? Would you, would you then have the same Coral notion? Coral anal beads. Okay. Would you have the same notion <laughs> as you did before? It would. Um, it would. I would have it. Fucking, you're a demon. <laughs> Your ass has the cultural pleasure. <laughs> it would. It would have. I would have an issue with that. You'd have an issue with that. Okay. So then, exactly. So then, there's but, times but when people my, are. Taking your culture, not respecting the fact of but, what's in the past of it, and I'm taking a piss out. But, of it. You're thinking that can, can I, you're thinking that wearing their clothes normally I, or wearing it as a fashion is not taking the piss. Whereas some people think it's taking the piss. I, the same way the porno will be taking the yeah, piss. Yeah, but the same way. But listen, cultures blend, mix, and integrate throughout the history of time. Nobody or no culture is an island. Nobody has not taken anything from something else and then incorporated it into their own. It's just it just doesn't happen. That's not how real life happens. Mr. Wolf so, was so, taking so, Caparanus so when you from start, Brazil. When you start picking and choosing, well, it's all right, you can wear these kind of clothes, but you can't wear this. You can go, you can, you know, you can walk like this, you can't walk like that. You can t use these slang or t these terms, but you can't use that. It's, you are now deciding what, which part of my, my culture can you take. Sorry, go on. Well, hello, would it be a piss take if it was a Nigerian porno? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to Listen, uh, let me just put it to you like this stuff. Yeah. Be more if if us man's here, all f four of us man's here, is it four of us or five? Well, I can't count. You know, Mr. Webbs doesn't count. So Jermaine right. don't all, count. Jermaine. All, all five of us here. If we were to go out right now, yeah, and somehow um, uh, get the Orthodox Jew garment, yeah, and all five of us <laughs> was to wear it, it, and all five of us was to wear it, and Pa Road, yeah, 
being ourselves, but we're just wearing the orthodox Jew garment. Do you reckon we would live to the end of today? Yeah, of yes. Walking around Stanford Hill, do you yeah. reckon yes. we would? Nah. Yes. Yes. Nah, nah. Especially yes. if we put our hands behind our back. Then my- <laughs> <laughs> have I got that? Have I got that juicy curl? The, the juicy curl. You got the beard though. A lot of them rock the beard. You can just wrap your hair a little bit. Yeah, the, the, the dreadlocks can just curl their dreads. And curl it I'm, it. All I'm saying is, I don't know if we will survive today. Mans will come up and shake our hands. I don't think so. I don't think we'll, I think we'll get away with it. I don't they think hate so. Blacks, but they, but they, are black, they hate blacks so but much. But they are black Jews blacks, that dress like that though. Yeah, but we, have you seen them? I've seen a couple of black one Jews. I saw, I saw one black Jew. I guess where he was? By himself. <laughs> <laughs> but then they'll leave you I've never seen a, I've never seen a black Jewish woman. Only a guy. Yeah, I've never seen a black Jewish woman either. Because I'm, why? I'm, I'm, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I've met a couple. Because they're in the house. But trust me, Jewish um, hate blacks, bruv. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Simple like, things. And that would be a big uproar. Like mm. Israel would be on TV like these people are taking the fully mm. mocking the thing. So like that's that's what they would... They, that's, that's what would happen. So I'm saying... I care about my culture enough to be offended and be upset about mm. that. If somebody else has got a problem with me being upset or be upset, uh, you, you suck him on my dry. I've <laughs> got a question. It's a random question that I asked it before and you lot told me I should ask it on the podcast but could you bring it up? If there was a battlefield, yeah, on one side of the battlefield was awful that was used and the other side of the battlefield was the Amish, who would win? The Amish. <laughs> Why? Because the Amish work hard in the fields all day. Nah, the Jews would win. Nah, the Amish would win. Um, Amish don't have nuclear weapons. Solomon will bang up any <laughs> any Jewish man. Is that simple? Amish don't have nuclear weapons. And they'll have weapons, just general ones. Nah, have... Amish, Amish will build a bomb shelter. No, standard. they would. No, nah, Amish will come at you with, with a, a, a AK 49s. No, they will come at you. Sorry, not the Amish, the uh, Jews. Yeah. Have you not seen Banshee? No, Banshee's bad, bro. You see the Amish in Banshee, though, yeah. yeah they're mad, right. it's but, yeah, but, yeah, but, again, yeah, but again, they're again, coming out with AK forty seven. Yeah, their, their weapons, their weapons are all very manual, isn't it? Like yes. the sickle blade and all them it's kind their of fists stuff, and knives. Yeah, machineries break down, man. Them Jews, man's are coming with atomic bombs. They're coming with they're orthodox they, Jews. Smart, smart, but they're they, orthodox Jews. I'm talking about they, the ones they, that they, they, they those are the Zionists, bro. Listen, those they, those are the reason why in their basement you will find. Did you say Pakistan grenades? You'll find AK forty sevens and I and, still and, think the Amish and the win. codes to the nuclear bombs. Trust what, me. Are you saying that every Jew has the code to the nuclear? They, all of them, <laughs> every single one of them. <laughs> I still think the Amish would win, and you know why? Because one Amish will be a rebel, grab a Quran, and throw it into the middle of the Jews, and the Jews will scatter. Just <laughs> So let's get back to this uh, cultural appropriation uh, thing. Is, you should never talk about religion. You should never. Is, is there a time where cultural appropriation is all right? And where have blacks? Can we talk about cultural you? appropriated what, from? What about um? What about these hair, are your questions, man. About, so answer the bloody what about questions. hair and stuff. Okay, all right, and fine. Is, there, is hair one of the ones that you I would, did? I would cultural appropriation? I yeah. Actually, simple. I want to ask. Man, this just, question. Just, man just didn't even listen to what we asked. I said something. <laughs> you did. You asked if hair. Yeah. No, yeah, he, he, he was responding. He was asking him. Yeah, I'm responding, but I'm asking. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Well, don't let people. Finish. I know. Sorry. I hate all of you. That's why. Would you would you be offended, or do you ever get offended when you see a white person rocking locks? See, I was talking about the other way around. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Don't let me defend you again, Webs, and then and then fling it in my face like pie. Mm. Do I get offended by that? Because the the question was, uh, don't worry about that. About black, come back in a bit. About these (laughs) these darky women that want to put on weave and straighten their hair. I don't get footballers. I don't get offended by that. I don't get offended by that. You don't? No. But literally, if you left the if white people left their hair like did nothing to it, it locks up as well. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily get offended by that. But a lot of black people do. Well, get offended by it. Yeah. Yes. They say it's a black hairstyle. Why? Well, some, some white people think it looks stupid. Yeah, the white people that, that have don't have dreads think it looks stupid and dirty. And black people that see white people with dreads often think that is one of the things that is generally black people don't like. They don't like white people with dreads. Yeah, I get, yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, don't get me wrong, when I see it, it does come across a little bit strange. And braids. It, it comes with- mm, yeah. <laughs> Even cornrow. Even cornrow. When I see a white woman busting cornrow, I look at them and think. It's questionable. Mm. Yeah, but do you do you get upset about I it? I don't get upset, but I look at them and think, mm. why? You think why? I don't know why I do. Because you're I a just, racist. It's okay. Just probably. open up and accept it. But it's only it's only cornrows. It's not really like, you know because you know they have their they have their French braids, which no. is different, completely different. Yeah, but I don't know. I think calling it a French braid is again trying to 
to claim the thing, mm. isn't it? Mm. But maybe it is a French braid. Maybe what? there are French but people why, did that. Why, why, why French? Why? Yeah, well, maybe it's black a people, particular maybe, style, isn't maybe it? Maybe black people were doing it in Africa and French people were doing it in France. But because we're speaking English, we call it French braids because they happen to be doing Why is it not called African braids? Because when the, the French were Because French don't speak English. I'm saying that both cultures <laughs> were doing it, but the British saw their French do it and that's why they called it a French braid. I think so. Maybe it's appropriation. You need to look on really. the history on that, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think we could, we could we could decide which one did that one braid first. I didn't say anything about first. I said no, you, I'm just what, saying what that you saw. Well, obviously, black I'm people saying, did it first. I'm just saying maybe Why? they didn't do it. Black people were on the planet first. Doesn't mean that they did that yeah. braid. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. they did it. They did it. First. What's a French braid? What is a French braid? Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's cornrows. Right? It's not cornrows. No, it's not. It's not. It's one big plait. It's one big plait. No, it's not. What is it? The two ones that come out the thing like a ponytail. Those are the French braids. What? Exactly. The fact that you even look at me shows you how many black no, kids I'm, don't have it. No, I'm talking about like, the example you just gave. They I'm, have one braid going that way. No, it doesn't have to be one. It's that's quite, a French braid. That's right a French there. braid right there. What are you looking one at? Long like cat. some flipping little house ah, on the prairie. For the, for for the, the, that's that pigtails, like the devil bro. Horns. For the purpose. Pigtails, sorry, that's what I meant. The pigtails. pigtails then. Yeah, okay. Pigtails. Are you happy? Are you a hairdresser. Are you happy with the white people claiming pigtails? What? That's there, isn't it? I didn't say it was the first place. It's white tails. Yeah. Kunta told you we don't eat swine up in this bitch. But um, but let's go back to what I was talking about with the other side. Because like, mm. obviously there's relaxer. All right. Can there I... is weave. And then there's the footballers hairstyles as well. Yeah. These are all. They have their old. <laughs> they got their old. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. What, what, okay. So first thing. Sorry. First things first. We can't have appropriated relaxer because we made it. Starting. No, but the the why did we make it to do what the hair? It doesn't matter. We <laughs> what do you mean? It doesn't matter. We made re- you said I'm talking relaxer. about what relaxer not, does to the hair, yeah, not, not, not natural not, relaxer itself. Okay, but uh, what I would say is that you it, there's a way you could look at it, and you could say there because, are two definitions to relaxer as well. Sorry, oh, I damn. To, I just wanted to say sorry. Go on. No, I'm just saying there's two definitions. There's don't worry, but carry on. Okay, well, all right, thank you so much. All right, my views on this um, hair thing is there's two ways you can look at it. One, you can look at it that black people have uh, tried to appropriate white hairstyles. And the second way is that you could say that because of the uh, power dynamics of the country and the situation we're in, the white people, uh, black people are just trying to fit in. Because if you had uh, Afro nappy hair, then you couldn't fit in society in the western world whether it was uh europe or the americas so they 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 were forced into cultural appropriation they didn't want to but i couldn't get a job or i couldn't i couldn't do anything if, if my hair was nappy so that's why I, that's why i did that you but, say nappy is oh, if it's you never heard itself. messy Mm-mm. Nappies, as in natural hair, when it grows out of your head before it starts looking S- simple salmon question nappy simple salmon question here yeah go ahead if somebody's hair grows out of their head a certain way and they don't do anything to make it grow like that. Yeah. And then somebody else does something to their own hair to make it like the person whose hair grows out of their head. Is that really an appropriation? Yes. Did did they make that thing? Did the, did the white person make their hair or did their hair just come out like that? Like they didn't have a choice in that. Okay. It's not their intellectual property, so to speak, is it? Really? It is. Oh, you're it's talking the same about same as tanning. No, but tanning is tanning is appropriation. What tanning? Tanning could be ca- classified as appropriation. Really? Because they're trying to make themselves look something that they're not. Yeah. And look like a certain person. Yeah. Or I a certain this, culture. So a white person might want to look Mediter- Mediterranean. A Mediterranean person might want to look Asian. An Asian person might want to look black. They want to look darker. They want to look black. happen. And even <laughs> yeah, and that, even black folks when they um, bleach. So, um, yeah. yes, so, yes, so you're saying bleach that is appropriation too. Appropriation of what of trying to make himself kind of, darker or even more like uh, a European and Caucasian, and we have accepted. black people who go as far to make themselves look as light as they possibly can. I forget that, uh, Nigerian, I don't know, I don't know if I, if I, see I forget that, as that Nigerian woman who has got this cream that is really god forbid, it's, um, it's not don't true. say the name because it's just yeah, yeah, be, yeah. Mm. but but she's she's a she's a millionaire from the back of it because it is supposed to be the best uh, light in lotion the most natural form have it, you it, tried it, it? 
Idiot. Was there an interview where she said she didn't care about the ramifications? She didn't of care. Yeah, yeah, it's the same woman. She's listen, not Nigerian. Uh, when they no, she is Nigerian. Mm. Listen, they sell slaves. You can make money over these. You can make money for these things. Well, I think that's appropriation as well. I think yeah, it, appropriation slaves, happens in is appropriation. It happens in all cultures: black, white, Puerto Rican, Asian. Simple. Are you trying to say it's not appropriation for black people to straighten their hair and lighten their skin? I don't see. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't understand the concept of appropriation, probably. But I don't. I don't consider it that to be appropriation. So some. I can't. The problem I have here is I can't give you the justifiable argument for you to understand why I don't feel like right. it's. Let me ask you a question then. Do you think that people in Africa wearing suits, full, you know, free free piece suits? Mm-hmm. Do you think that is appropriation? No. Interesting. And the reason why I say that, and you, the reason why I say that is um, because what I, what I was thinking about in particular earlier is the Nigerian legal system, yeah, in courts and stuff like that. Mm. In Nigerian courts, they wear um, the wigs, the wigs and the clothes, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking that. to myself, why would you do that? Well, but, but then when you take, sense why I do that, but when you take into account the colonialization that happened or what have you, that was an in, an enforced. Um, yeah, but the suits the standard, enforced. but it, the suits are enforced. They're culturally enforced because if you're doing business on an international scale, the international uniform for business is a suit, and you whether you yeah, like it or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the Arabs. That's true. I, the, I, the, I, the Arabs that wear their their their, their native clothes when they when, they, the again, when they're mouth. pushing their again, money again. This is the problem that I have with the Nigeria. international uniform for for business is money. No, that this is the problem that I have with Nigerians and Africans in particular, when we go to these business um, uh, occasions, I think that we should wear the garments that we consider within our culture to be appropriate for that setting. So I don't think that we should be wearing suits. To why, go, why, why are they wearing suits then? What do you mean? Why did they wear the suits? I don't know why they wear the because suits. Because they're appropriating the other people's culture of of business. No, no, yes. no. Again, okay, no, so you have to understand what I'm saying to you. The suit has been enforced on them. It has been enforced on them for them to fit in. For them to fit in. So that, why don't the Arabs? Because again, it's about it's a certain level of pride about what your what is your own thing, yeah. And we don't have that level of pride about what is our own thing. Our cultural garments, um, are used. It seems it are used as as a hierarchy within our own culture, within people of our own culture. We have this idea that because you don't understand our culture, you don't know that this level of Agbada is beyond that level of Agbada. So rather than us teach you that by being ourselves, like the like the uh, Arabs do, where they say this is our garment, we are Arabian, this is what we do. We don't do that. We say that for this Agbada is better than that Agbada for. Nigerians or people who understand the culture and then outside of that if we want to have a conversation with you we don't do it on our terms we don't say I'm wearing Akbada this is the highest Akbada that you can possibly wear but, we then wear a suit but when I'm a like, Nigerian president comes to England he doesn't wear a suit mm. again he wears his garment correct and that's how it's supposed to be so then again going back to the original term is it a case that you have to wear it or you're choosing to wear it and if you're choosing to wear it is that not appropriation again I would say to you, and I'm not saying this just because I'm, I'm trying to win you an are, argument. No, no, no. I would say to you that do we consciously know as as a people what this means? Do we know what it means to wear our garment? Do we culturally know what it means? Of course they do. No, I don't think they do. So no, Nigerians are that stupid? I'm not... Again, stupid. Yes. Yes. Fuck it. Yes. Go on, Webs. Ooh. Let me ask a question. Just to, It's not a tangent, but it's a little segue. As always. Why don't we, as... As Nigerians, we are at this table, wear our traditional garments on an everyday basis. Because it's why too we wear t-shirts, why are we wearing jeans and so on and so forth. Oh, well, I'm changing into native clothes later on. For you, an occasion. Why would you not? Why For would you not occasion. wear it every day? Why would you just keep it to an occasion? But the climate of this country is not accumulated for Nigerian clothes. Mm. I don't believe that too well because you can what? you can you can adapt it to be. But then it's not the same, then is it? It's now been adapted to change to to well, match. No, you the, just the, wear the it so much. You, you realize there's no Nigerian coat, like there's no native coat. You, there's no native something to stop. That's the, why you the see, rain hit you. That's why you see that he is wearing one. I think we, 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 added a we, big coat on top of it. If back, yeah, but then back why home, don't, there why are don't leaves that? that are big enough that you pluck it from yeah. the tree and you use that as an umbrella. There's nothing here that you to use answer your like, question to stop um, the rain coming down. To answer your question, Webs, I think that in the summertime, I think that you will find more buddies like us 
wearing more of our garments. You know, the the shirt. Do you the, in the, the summertime? T-shirt. I've got a couple. Yeah, Do you and in the summertime? Then yes. I respect your garment I've, more than to wear on a day to day basis. And why? I'm, why would and why I'm actually, should it be again? And, 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 yeah, sorry, sorry, that's what I'm I saying. Because, because, yeah, but why case, should it be worn just on a special basis? Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. It's special is, is that I've I've got a couple, and I'm actually getting some made for me to wear Cash. look, casually, yeah. just during the summer months. And like what uh, Wahala said, the climate you can't be wearing that in the summertime. And there are winter some time, time, yeah. sorry in in the winter time, and you will find. That there are some business people who come from back home, coming here even and going to European countries who do wear the native garment. So I would say that a majority wear their suits, but you always find that some who are so in deep in their culture that they'll wear everything. And this is what I'm saying. And I think collectively, the reason why he may be, um, Stavros was able to give the example about the Arabs doing it is because collectively they've decided whether that's, organized or just happenstance they've decided that they're gonna wear their garment that's it but so that's Arab but, people yeah, but, yeah but that's in arabia some, some do so, no they do it over here as well okay so you it, see if we're moving? going back home and in the uh business centers back home they're wearing their bada. they yeah. are you know they're, they're they're wearing their native and their culture I see a lot of suits bro i still think on a day-to-day basis you can wear your agbada in this culture. You cannot climate. wear an agbada. Wear your long johns underneath if you are cold okay. or over cold. People don't even wear it in Nigeria, don't just wear an agbada on a day-to-day basis. Agbada is is you dress up. Hey, it's, 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 it is like yeah, wearing, so I should, as you know. I should take out the rubbish in agbada. It's, it's like saying, <laughs> why, why don't you, like, without going to work, why don't you dress every day in a three piece suit? It's like, I don't wear a three piece suit or a tux. You don't wear a tux every day. So that's like an agbada, you know. You don't wear a tux every it's day. Different you don't styles, wear agbada every like day. What simple but it's something like levels. something like a dashiki and the uh, uh, baba. Is it baba? The trousers? No. Which one's the trousers? Shokoto. Shokoto. Sorry. Shokoto. So dashiki and shokoto. You could you wear, could that, wear every you could, day. You could wear it every day. Yeah. That's yeah. What I'm saying. So I want to. I want to just just before we end, I want to fixate on why is it then that we don't wear clothes that could be casual. Yeah. And you could put the coat on top and the hat on top if it's raining or it's cold. You could wear that because even in winter, I wear a t-shirt. I just put, I put something on top of it. I'll tell you yeah. what, part of the reason is, is that when you wear those things, the appropriate footwear is not appropriate for all seasons. I'll wear trainers with, with, with Chocotel. Hey. Yeah. Fair enough. I will go as far as to say it's these bastard tailors. They're so difficult to get hold of. And if you, and get, expensive. If, if you get a good one, it's, it's, you, you can't get a slot. Just on that. Bastard tailors. <laughs> Listeners. If you know of a good male tailor, because there's so many ones for the women out there, but the men, there's, there's not many for us to choose from. If you know of a good one, please send us. What you'll find is that these... The social links, I got please. one what, what you'll find brocade at house. Is that these it's tailors... Like, they're like drug dealers, man. No, no, no. You've got that good crack. But the tailors prefer to work with men because their garments are very simple. Whereas the women bring different designs and different ways of trying to make something fit them. We have our uh, shokoto and our top. Uh, yeah, but they don't, uh, African they don't women happier wearing in like in today's cold, in today's climate. Are African women more yes happy wearing um, native clothing than men? Yes, only during occasions. But it depends what you define as native. Not casually. They, they're not wearing any room, but print them. Yeah, they're wearing the print, but uh, then they can. They make can customize it to, it to look like European, yeah, yeah, modified, to yeah. European dress. Okay, okay, okay. But for me, as I said, uh, you don't just wear those type of garments every day. You don't wear those type. Of, you don't wear agbada every day. Would you put on the agbada for the special sex? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's just getting in the way, man. Can you imagine you, it gets in the way when you're walking. You don't know when you're trying to be doing the, this thing. <laughs> just throw it over okay, the shoulders then. like this. All right then. <laughs> Last question before we go. I want you guys to visualize this. And then tell me which one you'd prefer. Which one, you're out with your women. You've gone to an event. Mm. And which one makes you think, when we get home, I'm going to deal with you in a different manner? Maxi get in heels, yeah. man. Maxi Maxi dress. Dress. Eva. Maxi dress. Oh. Is that dress up? No, I'm just Maxi saying. dress. So she's got a uh, European style dress, tight or or fit it to whichever way you like. So and let's say a maxi it, dress. Let's it, see what he said. Maxi dress is not a dress up dress though. That's, yeah. that's, that's very casual. casual. It's casual. It's casual. Ah, maxi could be worn. Depends what type of maxi you get, you know. Listen, if my if I'm going to a, a, a proper event and my woman puts on a maxi dress, then I'm going by myself. You'd be surprised <laughs> what type of maxi dresses you can find, you know. <laughs> Maybe, but okay. I'm, I'm, He's not, I'm not formal. Talking, yeah, formal. yeah. Formal. Formal. Thank you. That's the word. Formal. That's the word I'm, I'm looking for. A formal, a formal dress. 
but it's 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 fitted or whatever you like. It fits your woman's shape. She's she's got whatever on, you like. Yeah, what's it? She's, she's got sexy. She's, she's got on her heels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's got her handbag and everything. Or um, that bastard too. Gele clutch. The gele the hat. And what? The gele is the hat. Just just the gele. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, what's the woman? What's the woman's? Uh, uh, is a uh, which one are you talking about? Are you talking about? Yeah, you talking about old women or old Are you talking about the ones where they use the print? You, this is what I'm saying. This question is a bit, a bit. No, I'm, yeah, old, yeah, we're saying old woman, but yes, that that style. Well, like you, a rapper, yes, and and and, and the top, the t- the type that your mum wore to a formal event. Because, it was the dad, the dad was wearing his like and the one. I'll tell you right now, the modern day Nigerian woman is not wearing a rapper. But blatantly, this is what they are wearing. Some Your woman, movie. which one? But a wedding they do. Which one do I'm you feel is sexier? You know the idea of a rapper coming off really quick. And if you the know. rapper is worn right, you listen. Know? Don't try and contour your answers to, to That's make. That's what it, they're doing, man. Yeah. Which one are you looking at your woman and, and licking your lips and saying, "Tonight is the night." So, so we're not talking about a material that has been designed in a way for them to look a certain sexiness because what they're doing now is that they're taking the material creating the design i think some of them are really creative very western designs and yeah very western design but they're go. using their not, not you know the native material and they're turning it into a nice outfit i think, I oh, think so, it's, one, so it's not a nice outfit when it's naked. no, there's, no, there's, no, no there no. is some new new age <laughs> robe that people are making as well you know yeah that's what i'm some saying tight ones that yeah so basically yeah. We, i think as i men, sent we're one saying, in a group the, just the, the other day the clothes if you can remember I can't. And she was she was she was wearing the head tie, and she had a nice uh, printed this thing, and it fit her well well. <laughs> 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 but but it seems like what you're saying is that it doesn't really matter what you're wearing as long as it's tight. Then I'm happy. If I see if I can see your the correct angle of curvature, then I'm then I'm cool. Well, I'm gonna say gelly and heels all day, man. What's in between the gelly and heels? Uh, the woman did it. So for for people that <laughs> don't know, gelly is gelly is a Nigerian head wrap. Yeah, yes. because, because what I'm saying is that now, although Wahala said he's seen a few, I have not seen none of my younger looking uh, uh, mm. women wearing a wrapper. None out, of them. Not out. I'm well, talking about at events even. They're all specially designed and well created, which oh, I my, like. My woman wears wrapper, bro. And what, a proper... Yes. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah, yeah. few and far between. And that's what I'm saying. You don't see it now. Stavros has a native woman, fam. Native. Um. Everybody answered. Yeah, everyone answered. Sorry, everyone answered. You have answered. You, you have answered. answered. Shut up! Why did you say everyone answered? <laughs> I said everyone ain't answered. You, oh. you said everyone has answered. Shut up. Um. Be honest with yourself. I am gonna be honest with myself, and you know I'm not gonna like my answer. I, the clothes don't really do it for me, man. I just like a woman naked in it. That's it. <laughs> I don't really. Clothes don't really. Rev man up. Yeah, so which one of the two though? That's what I'm saying. Clothes aren't really. Yeah, but which one of the two? If you had to pick one, if you had to see your woman walk out the house with one of those clothes, and you think to yourself tonight, I'm gonna put Stu on her back. Which one of the two? Stu <laughs> on her back. <laughs> Stu on her back. Stu on her. Oh, you are a sick man. It's is, probably is, been is a that euphemism for juice. Yes. As uh, as um. <laughs> It's probably the native, but again, uh, 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 uh. I'm just picking that one because it's the native, not because of anything else. It doesn't do the clothes don't really do anything for me, man. Not yeah. in that sexual way, anyway. Webs. Yeah, if she's in native and it's it's figure hugging, and I can see what's coming off when it's coming off. Yeah, it depends what native we're talking about. This is true because I don't care. It could be any native, any African native. Yes. I'll call sign any African native I don't care how they design it um, but the modern day designs that they're doing now I, I have to say that I love them but modern day designs are based on western styles of clothes and they're not is native it? is it? <laughs> yes oh, wait, is what, what, what? Native? So, so what we're saying because it's tight and it's well fitted like, like, yes. yeah, our culture doesn't think about it think about the garments mm-hmm. think about the, the climate weather. the climate in which these garments are made for and then it's never ask tight. yourself why would what, what advantages would the garment being tight have in that climate? There aren't any. It's usually tight because it's appropriated. No, it's usually tight when it's n- when it's <laughs> natural because our women have good figures. You African mm. women are appropriate. Yeah. You are appropriate. So are we clothing? saying? Are we saying that? Uh, our, what what uh, you have to remember that from the culture that our African culture, 
way, way, way back in the day, and we're talking about hundreds, thousands of years ago, they never wore tight garments. The, it, it's, it's not conducive to the environment for them to wear a tight garment. It doesn't make any sense. Some of them they wear garment. Period. There you go. Like it's, it's so ding, 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 the, ding, the tightness ding. is definitely not. I wouldn't say that's traditional or fitted. We should say. Yeah, but again, what are the advantages to wearing a fitted? Listen, garment? can we touch on that? Uh, because it looks good. That African women with these uh, modern style of clothing that you're talking about, just because the print may be African, even though it's made in Switzerland. The style yeah? might not be. So, yeah. so the design is the, different. The, the cloth is made in Switzerland. The, or, the, or Holland. The, the, or Holland, sorry. And the, and the, uh, the actual style of the, the clothes is European. Yeah. Is this not all just co- appropriation? Perhaps. So what you're saying is that you want your black queen dressed in African cloth, but looking like the white woman's dress. Do you know why? You know? Do you know why? Do you know why? I'm just asking. Do, do you know why black people get offended by what these these acts of appropriation? I think it's because the the, the people who are doing the appropriating don't give any credit, and they make out like it's their thing. That's where the problem lies. Where? 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 The same. Where? The same garment we were talking about earlier about the the wedding garment with the beads. The beads yeah. yeah. They didn't give credit to where that came from. Uh, the giving credit, the giving the credit part. I'm not arguing with nobody. I'm not saying that genuinely when somebody appropriates something, they give credit. This is where I got it from first. Same as sampling tracks as a, as a music. Nobody's like, yeah, this is where I got it from. But, but in they, terms they of saying, are. we did it first. Well, financially, yeah, they have to write this in a small print, but they're not saying in the beginning of the track. I think you'll find that, that women who had their babies, uh, the European way of uh, wrapping, it around. wrapping the kids around their front and around the back is like deemed as a new thing, a new in thing. You know, when For this country, it is. Well, for the, for the, sorry, for the Westerners, it is. Yeah, but the point is, is that when our women had their babies on their backs, mm-hmm. even here, yeah, it was deemed as inappropriate and, you know, some kind of primitive. Uh, yeah, primitive, like. Okay. And now because they're wearing it, all of a sudden, and it's it's cool. And that's the problem. Yeah, because if it's a khaki it. piece of material, then it looks good. That's I, the problem that I, we have with it. I think it, this goes right back. That is the problem that this we have with it. Right back to what, what we started with earlier on where I said, I don't hate on the rich person. I don't hate on the person with a nice car. And I don't hate on the person with a nice house. But I have green eyes with a person that goes on holiday. I don't care what nobody thinks about how my, 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 my wife, how she wraps our daughter around her back. I'm not worried about them. So when they do it and they think it's cool now and it wasn't cool before, don't bother me because I, I didn't care what you thought before because it's our thing. It only bothers me when I care about what you think about my thing. If I don't care what you think about my thing, then when you think it's cool now, it's like, okay, well, thanks. You've come to, you've, you've joined the party, the thumbs up. Yeah, but the problem that everyone else has is that it's not presented as our thing. It's presented as their thing. And mm-hmm. they then turn around. To, so have you seen the advert for Tune Stick? I heard. No? I heard. Oh, yeah. yes. I heard that there's, there's a Tune Stick. Oh, FB, bro. Oh. I heard that there's that. a Tune Stick. Oh, you were using thing. it. Yeah, and imagine that if, well, we were doing the thing a long time and if we're seen with a Tune Stick, we're looking at, as primitive animals, you know. So yeah, back off. They're, they're, they're selling. They're selling back off now. They're selling shoes because it's something new <laughs> to do what with to brush your teeth. To brush your teeth. Or to use as your. T- as it's a, a de- revolutionary de- um, form of brushing teeth. It's filled with minerals and calcium and. Okay. For the listeners that don't know, uh, the chewing stick is something that we back home use. I guess it started off from before toothbrushes were around, and you used it to brush your teeth. In essence, you chewed on. Was it like a bark, bark from? It's a and you, bark from a certain tree and, and you clean your teeth and it and cleaned your teeth and it cleaned your teeth. But like all this, when you and go you dentist teeth. and get whitening done, then back up would do that. So when you would see people walking around the street just chewing, the, chewing the thing, that's mm. that was a normal thing. I don't think you see it as often anymore. Even it got, it got imported. I, you were seeing people just doing it here in in London, just walking up and down doing it in your house. Um, but now that I'm hearing that the Westerners is is it Unilever or something? No, I don't know who it is. Some um some Scandinavian company or whatever oh, it is. E block. And they put it in a in a plastic tube and they're selling it. They got a big advert, a whole campaign around it and whatever. Obviously there's no black people in the advert, but do you know what I mean? It's Well, the line is I'll take any motherfucking money if they're giving it away. <laughs> see, you see what I'm saying? All right, let's say our goodbyes, let's say our goodbyes. They call it the raw toothbrush. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Wahala. Yeah, Wahala is going to say later to you all. Enjoy your week. Break up yourselves. I'm done. Oh, 
at Big Wahala on Twitter as well. And at Big Wahala at um, Instagram. I forgot about the whatever notes you call them. Church notes. Church notes. Church notes. The one looking at me like I don't know what to say. It's Yemi. Online. <laughs> 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 Yummy's Insta. Yeah, Yummy's Insta. You can catch me on Instagram and uh, it's Yummy Online on Twitter and Facebook via uh, ESN. Just look for me there. He is DJ Webslinger on Twitter and he is the actor on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. How about the other guy? Uh, he's not around. Okay. He's, and, he's and, in jail. And they are Legion. Yes. Um, at Simple Simon FB on Twitter. Um, you probably won't find me on Facebook. The page is all closed up and stuff. Again? Mm, I think it's always been that way. Mm. As in private? I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. One of them one there. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, but. privatized yourself. Well, why not, innit? Um, be good to each other and don't accept the appropriation. Fight. Fight in the streets. Fight. Are you saying that, you know, they should riot? I didn't say anything about riot. Why are you inciting violence. acts of violence? You said fight in the streets. <laughs> yeah. What kind of fight is that? It could be intellectual fight. It could be, you know, psychological fight. Well, well, essentially, speak, it's speaker's a riot. Corner. Come on, my friend. Yeah. Speaker's corner. Get me. Uh, I'm Stavros Boss. Catch me at Stavros Boss everywhere. Uh, catch us collectively at ESM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. On Facebook is facebook.com slash ESM Podcast with an S at the end. And email us any questions, comments at esnpodcast at gmail.com. Also rate, subscribe, and uh, tell a friend to tell a friend, as Mr. Wolf used to say. doesn't say anymore, but I used to like it. Say, tell a friend mm. to tell a friend to tell a friend about ESN. Help us to help you. One time. Well, Hello's got something to say, I think? No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think to say. Uh, we're on uh, Google Play now as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 we're on Google Play. Hey, yeah. congratulations to us. Yeah, so uh, we're out there. We're out there, fam. We're, we're, we're yeah. spreading and yeah. We're, yeah. we're building. Yeah, keep it simple, man. Listen, like, follow, share. All right, so uh, thank you for listening to episode 19 of Eloquently Saying Nothing. We are out. And if, remember, if you ain't saying nothing, say it well. Slack for life. Are, are you my head at like, UJ Hustle? Which one? Common sense? Nah, the one way he goes. The one way he goes. Um, I came. I, 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 he saw me in the Benz and I came in a black one, left oh, in a oh, black one. Yeah, 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 yeah. What did they call him? DJ Huss? No, Jay Huss. Jay Huss. Oh, Look what I done. Came in the black Benz and left in a white one. Ah, yeah, I like that too. He's a Nigerian, yeah? No, no he's not. Gambia. Conga- yeah, Gambia. Gambia. I think Congolese, is it? I don't know, Gambia. Gambia. He's one of them ones. He's not. He's not. He's not Nigerian. But yeah. I do like. I do like his. He's, like he's, he's the one that said, uh, "I want my Fanta with no heist. Yeah. Yeah. No heist. Yeah. 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 He's, he's like, I want to get friendly with her. Want to get friendly he with her? He properly pushed the H, comma. Yeah. Uh, no. Heist. <laughs> what I like about him, he's unapologetically African. He puts it and he puts it in his music yeah. as a normal. I just hope he didn't get himself in the world and all kinds of bad things. I do like the James stuff. I was even thinking the other day that if you if you could do a trip to Nigeria or somewhere like that, I think a lot more people do like that. You know they do like the um, uh, Jamaica Jam. Yeah. They, they do Ghana already, bro. I think, yeah, I think it was Christmas, Christmas in Ghana is like, it's collectively every year more and more people are going to Ghana. Yeah, I think a lot of this is the definitely with Ghana because there's so much people uh, after the now. Um, that it's got to a point where they're probably a lot more interested in going to see West Africa. What I found out, and I didn't know that, kind of like a secret, it was like a secret society. Jamaicans are now the only ones. Yes, blatantly, do you not? Yes. They love no, so me. Like to the point where my own know. grandma, yeah, <laughs> my own grandma was like, yes, we like the African thing, we like it. Well, it, it's a natural progression because back in the day, what did, what did all our, our elves used to watch? You used to watch Bollywood. Bollywood. Africans used to watch Bollywood hard.